from a presidential perspective, is there any possibility that the president would end up pardoning his son? No. That was a quick response there. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre facing reporters just one day after a judge had rejected the proposed Hunter Biden plea deal in Delaware. The judge raising concerns over two separate agreements Hunter Biden's attorneys had initially reached with prosecutors. Ultimately, though, Hunter pleading not guilty after the deal fell apart. The attorneys, uh, both the attorneys with the Justice Department and Hunter Biden's legal team back expected within a month from now. With us now, Hogan Gidley is a former principal deputy White House press secretary in the Trump administration. Matt Schlapp is a CPAC chairman. Gerard Fletty, senior counsel at the Lawfare Project. Welcome, everyone. Hogan, let me start with you. Your experience addressing the press. What did you make of Karine Jean-Pierre's uh, no pardon comment there? Well, it was a short answer. It was succinct and it was also clear. The problem is I think it's going to be untrue. Uh, I think what she wanted to be able to say was, look, Hunter's done nothing wrong and so we don't have to get to that point. The problem is as evidence begins to mount, you'll notice the left doesn't ever attack the messenger. They don't even attack the message. They know it's all clear. Instead, they just turn and talk about Donald Trump or Republicans writ large. But the evidence is hurting Hunter Biden and eventually will get to Joe Biden, as I think everyone quite well understands at this point. So she doesn't want to be able to, or want to have to talk about things like this, but the problem is uh, she's squarely in the middle of it because Hunter and Joe are so close in these business deals. Her answer was sharp. Again, it was clear, but I do think it's going to come back to bite her in the end, as have many of her answers in that briefing room. Hmm. Gerard, I'll go to you with, just with your legal background here. What's next for Hunter Biden's attorneys? How did they sort of re-strategize this approach once the plea deal fell apart? Well, it's, it's not that the plea deal fell apart so much as it's on hold. What really happened the other day was that Biden was not sure that he would be facing additional charges. It was not clear that he could not be presented with other charges based on a plea deal. And since he was not sure, he entered a not guilty plea, and the plea was not entered at that time. So that's not to say that it's not going to happen. It's just a delay. Uh, and the other part of it is the way it was structured was not clear that the judge could sentence him to prison if he did not comply with the provisions that he would not do drugs or buy other weapons. Yeah, okay, so the fine print there, also the concern about the uh, Foreign Agents Registration Act, the FARA designation, and the ongoing investigation surrounding that one. Uh, and yet, you know, we talk about Hunter Biden's legal challenges. The former president, Donald Trump, has some challenges of his own that he's dealing with, uh, just those new counts that he's facing in regards to the classified documents. And yet, Matt, I'm sure as you know, if you're watching polls, and I think we've got a few, it doesn't seem to impact Donald Trump's favoritism right now in the Republican primaries. But tell me your thoughts again, these latest developments, both in the classified documents case and what's expected to come down into the uh, January 6th election of 2020 case by Jack Smith. How's it going to impact Donald Trump and his campaign? Well, I think uh, the American people are fundamentally fair. Um, I, I don't think it actually matters what party you're in unless you're some kind of a hardcore leftist activist. You believe that the Department of Justice and the FBI should act in some kind of fair way. Nobody can look at these two uh, series of legal challenges that are going down the track at the same time. Everything they're throwing at Trump and nothing they're throwing at Hunter. Nobody can look at that and say, oh, uh, you know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Uh, instead, it looks like they're doing everything to collude between DOJ and prosecutors and Hunter's defense team to try to get him out of trouble. And the opposite's happening with Trump. What can we do to make up every jaywalking, double parking kind of infraction and turn it into a constitutional crisis and a felony? So. For this independent counsel uh, who's, uh, who's on uh, the, the records thing and for the J6 investigation, um, it simply looks like they are doing everything they can to help Joe Biden as he's clearly looking to be facing Donald Trump uh, in, in the next presidential election. They're doing everything they can to get Trump off the field. And I think the American people see it. And the poll that came out last night from Scott, Scott Rasmussen showed that only 35 percent of Americans think that this will harm Trump. That means the overwhelming percentage of Americans think that the fix is in and it's a rigged 
legal system to try to harm Trump or anybody associated with Trump. So good for Americans for seeing this for what it is. Mm, of course, uh, Democratic voters see it much differently, as we know. And Hogan, that, that makes me wonder, you know, how's this going to play ultimately in the general election here? No doubt, you can't argue that Donald Trump is the front runner in the GOP polling. But when you're looking at an independent voter or even Democrats who are dissatisfied with the Biden administration, how does this play into the the chance that they would change their vote from D to R and vote for, for whoever that candidate might be? Well, I think the American people understand how dangerous uh, an, a weaponized government is against the American people. And while we're talking about the three-letter agencies all mobilized to go after Donald Trump, let's be clear, they've gone after regular citizens, too. If you like the wrong tweet, if you attend the wrong speech, if you download the wrong podcast, you're a target for this government, not to mention the fact so many have already been arrested for standing outside of abortion clinics and protest or, or caring about your child's curriculum at school board meetings. You get arrested. So it's not just the president here. The American people, both on the right, the left, and in the middle, have seen their family and their friends get targeted by government simply for disagreeing with the overwhelming political sentiment that lies within the government structure. So I think uh, when you get to the general election, it really is going to come down to a choice here. Uh, Donald Trump's not going to be in a vacuum. You're going to be going up against the president of the United States in Joe Biden. has a lot of problems internationally and domestically, made all of our lives worse. But in addition, he's going to face his own legal charges. At the same time, he's using his own power to go after his political opponent and every single one of us out here who disagrees with his political agenda. That's going to bring a lot of people over to Trump's side or whoever the nominee may be at that point. All right, we'll leave it right there. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me today, sharing your thoughts and opinions. Hold again, Gidley and Matt Schlapp and Gerard Folletti. We'll speak again soon.